about 70% of all matches are being decided in the draft pick phase. But still, almost nobody is paying attention to it. And before some of you start to think, bro, I play in solo queue and my brain dead teammates just pick and bump whatever they want. I just can't do anything about it. Oh boy, oh boy, you're so damn wrong. Give me 12 minutes of your attention and follow these six steps to know exactly how you can massively influence the draft of your team from now on and ultimately win more games because of your knowledge. Number 1. Ensure you have a balanced team composition. We start slow with the basics before we get into the advanced stuff. I think we all know how the basic team composition looks like. The marksman is on the gold lane in the late game carry of the team, mages go to the mid lane and help out in ganks, assassins are the jungler who roam around to kill any squishy enemy in the early to mid game, fighters go to the XP lane and act as a second frontliner, and tank slash supports are the punching back of the team, aka the roamer, who provides vision, heal or CC effects. If you are playing solo, this is the best and most balanced composition with the lowest risk. But just because a hero has a certain role, it doesn't mean that they fulfill the same job. Let's have a quick look at some fighters and test your knowledge. Can you tell me the difference between the long ruby and yin and what their primary job is? I give you a couple of seconds to think about it, while also reminding you to re-download Mobile Legends with Aptoid, so you can basically get more diamonds for your money. The download link and the step-by-step -step guide is in the description box below. Now that you had some time to think about it, let me give you the answer. Every hero has one of these three major characteristics. The burst hero, which is Yin, who can kill any squishy enemy, but is useless against sustained heroes and lacks the ability to take down objectives quickly. The DPS hero, which is Ilong, who is great at taking down objectives, but is too squishy to sustain high burst damage. And the sustained hero, which is Ruby, who is very difficult to kill, but lacks the damage in ganks and the ability to push. So even when you have picked a fighter for the XP lane, you have to make sure to pick the right type of fighter that fits your team. And this is the point where you can highly influence the draft, even when you're playing solo queue. Let's play a little game. You're going to be the XP lane of the team. Your team already picked a DPS marksman, a burst mage and assassin, and as Roma, you have Natalia or a support like Rafaela. What type of XP laner should you pick now? Is another burst hero like Ling a good pick in this situation? Nope, of course not, because your team doesn't have any frontliner. In the laning phase, you might have the upper hand, but once the enemy DPS and sustain heroes got the items, your team will fall off the cliff badly, because there is no one in the team who can soak up damage. You also only have one hero at best in the team who can safely give vision to the whole team, and vision is so important, especially once you're in a higher rank. So if I have to choose a XP laner here, I would go for a sustain hero like Ruby with Haas Claws and a tank build, or even for a side lane tank like Uranus, Balleric or Akai. Like this I can ensure that we have a balanced team composition, which is the absolute basic to even having the chance to win a game. And that's why we're not stopping here, because this is only the minimum knowledge you need to make a good draft. Number 2. Understanding the meta heroes and your own capabilities. Some heroes are definitely stronger than others. Moonton can try their best to balance the heroes, but it is an inevitable fact that applies to every MOBA out there. As a player, your job is to find out which hero is part of the meta and what to do with this information. By the way, we release a new accurate tier list after every patch, so make sure to subscribe to not miss the new tier list in a couple of days. <coughs> if you or one of your teammates wants to play a meta hero, you should make sure that this player can use that hero. Unless your ally has like 9 matches with a win rate of 33%. Don't play meta heroes if you have no idea how to use them. Fanny for example is a very strong hero in basically every meta, but only in the right hands. If you have no idea how to play her, you should rather pick a hero you're actually good with, and who's hopefully not part of the clown tier like Hanabi or Tank Layla. Also if the meta hero is a pick or ban candidate, you should only keep that hero open if you have the first pick, and if there's someone who is capable of playing this hero. As of recording, the pick or ban heroes are Faramis, Valentina, Julian, and sadly my longtime main, 1-1. One, one. You should never leave these heroes open if you have the second pick. Just look at my rank stats this season with 1-1. One, one. Imagine not banning here when the enemy has the first pick. These two tips are the basic foundation for every successful draft. But with basics alone, you won't come as far as you want. For that we have number 3. Wombo Combo. Every hero has a unique set of skills. That lets every hero have certain strengths, but also certain weaknesses. Now when 
when you're combining skills from two or even more heroes that have a good synergy or make up for each other weaknesses, you can truly decide the outcome of a match in the drafting phase already. This is easier when you have a trio or even a five-man team of course, but even in solo queue, this is easy if you have a good hero pool. Good combos would include Johnson with a hero who has a strong AoE burst skill like Odette, Kadita, Badang or Bane, and the same goes for Atlas who works well with AoE damage heroes. Or to have less obvious ones, Franco and Beatrix. One hook, one shotgun and the enemy is dead. Or Lolita and Eve. Eve sets the border and taps the enemy to death while Lolita can slow and stun all enemies inside of it. These two will be a deadly combo in objective related team fights. For example when contesting the lord or taking down a turret. Here you have a huge list of heroes who work very well together. Thanks to everyone who shared their favorite partner. Apart from picking a hero that works very well, there's of course also the opposite. No, not picking heroes that work bad with your teammates. Number 4. Counter picking. Being the second team to pick heroes is not necessarily a disadvantage, because you have the last pick. What means you can pick one hero that can't be counter picked and you can always pick your heroes according to the enemy's lineup. While being able to pick the first hero is beneficial, it is very easy to pick a counter for this hero, if you have the hero pool for that of course. Counter picking a strong enemy hero is always a viable option, no matter if you play solo, trio or as a five man team. For that you need to know how to counter all these heroes of course, which you will learn in the upcoming Make All Heroes Cry series. You should already research though which heroes your main is countering and even more important which heroes are countering your main. If the enemy pick Diggy, you shouldn't pick a tank like Tigreal or Atlas. Or if the enemy has Kufra or Fovios, dash heroes like One One, Fanny, Lancelot or Harith will have a much harder time. But you know what? We can get even more advanced. There is also a way to counter the counter pick strategy. Number 5. Flexible Pick Trap with the disadvantage of being countered, the team with the first pick can bait the enemies by using a flexible pick. It means picking a hero that can take over multiple roles to confuse the enemy. For example, when you have Akai as a first pick, it means two things. Either this panda becomes the Roma, or he is sent to his natural environment with the retribution spell equipped. This trap can help to mask the team's intention and strategy, since Akai as Roma and Jungler have two different playstyles. Akai as Roma is using his skills to zone out or pin enemies down against a wall. But Akai as jungler uses his heavy spin to secure objectives like the turtle or the lord without interference. If your team wants to pick a jungler that is easy to counter like Fanny for example, you could pick Akai first and make sure to have Fanny as the last pick. Then your enemy only has one hero pick left to counter her. Or if they already picked some counters for her unintentionally, the Fanny player could adjust their pick. Yes, I know many players don't think about it. But if you have the knowledge and the right mindset, you could try to convince that Fanny player and tell her nicely the enemy has Kufra. This counters Fanny, maybe pick another hero? It won't work all the time, but if it just works sometimes it's better than nothing. The higher your rank is, the more important the strategy becomes. Because up in mythical glory most players know this and will use this strategy against you. They will also do number 6. Reading the enemy strategy. Now we are doing the real advanced stuff. If you're not aware of this, there are three major strategies in Mobile Legends. Team fight, pick off and split push. Reading the enemy's strategy will tell you what kind of heroes the enemy will pick most likely. It's highly unlikely to see a messed up job in Mythic 2 and above. So if you're anywhere close to that rank or want to rank up there, listen up. For example, if you see that the enemy picked Franco, you can be sure that the enemy is going for a pick off strat. If you see that the enemies picked Faramis though, then you know that they are going for the team fight strat. While you need to be careful for split pushes, when the enemy has picked a hero like Ling or Fanny. Deciding and adapting to a strategy is usually the job of the coaches in the pro scene. But since I doubt that you have a coach standing behind you while playing, you need to do that job by yourself. So let me explain the three strategies to you. The team fight strat means you are picking four or five heroes who are sticking together and who are actively looking for a team fight. This composition is usually filled with very strong heal, AoE and CC heroes. If they start a fight on the top lane for example, it will force the enemies to rotate there to help the poor side laner, which is almost like a burning flame that lures the moth into the grave. The team fight strat beats the pick off strat, because most pick off heroes are single targeted and have a low impact in a team fight. Here you have a list of heroes that you can use for the team fight strat. 
Now you most likely know already what the pickoff strat means. The jungler and mid laner will split up to fight opportunities to ambush enemies, while the roamer usually choose to follow one of them. They are constantly looking to find that one lost soul who runs around alone to instant eat them up alive. This composition is filled with strong single target skills and burst damage to secure kills. The pickoff strat beats the split push strat because it's very easy to pick off the split pushing hero. This strategy is also filled with heroes who have a strong snowball potential. One success successful gank will lead to another one and another one and so on. It's hard for the split pushing team to keep up with the skirmishes that are happening all over the map. This method exploits the early game advantages those pickup heroes have and aims to end the game already in the early to mid stage. Here you have a list of heroes you can use for the pickup strat. The split push strat means picking heroes with very strong lane management skills. They have the ability to clear minion waves and destroy turrets very fast. This composition is usually paired with a strong independent laner that has strong kiting abilities. Your team wants to bait the 5 enemies to engage into a gank that you don't really want to fight. You just want to buy enough time to lure the enemies away from the lane so the hero with a strong push ability can take down the turret in no time. The split push strat beats the teamfight strat because a team that focuses on teamfights can only reach their maximum potential when all 5 of them are sticking together. Getting the lane shaft down while being in the 4v5 teamfight will ruin their focus. And we have seen it enough times in MPL matches where one team get destroyed by an unexpected backdoor move. Here you have the list of heroes that you can use for the split push strat. And for even more advanced methods to win games, you should watch how to master the art of trading. Once you understand that dying is not always a bad thing, you will see the game with different eyes. See ya, mother!